came about um, a conversation with the Dean about following a Lego exhibition which had been very, very successful. And he wanted uh, a model railway exhibition. Um, there were various ideas at the time. But the thing about Chester and the railways is, of course, this is uh, where Thomas Bressy is, is uh, buried. And of course, um, Thomas Bressy built two thirds of all the railways in the world. So I just thought we all we all talk about the designers of the locomotives and the rolling stock and the engineers. We never talk about the guys that actually built the railway. And Thomas Bressy, of course, is a contractor. And I thought, well, if we we're going to be in Chester Cathedral, then it really happened to be a sort of nod to the navvies that built the railway. So I thought something I do three days a week is I go up and down the West Coast Main Line, which was for the best part the London to Birmingham Railway, which Bressing was one of the contractors along with Cubits. Uh, and I thought, well, if we use a bit of poetic license, because we can, because the one thing that the, the church wanted, they wanted Kevin Viaduct, which is on the Chester to Wrexham line, which he built. But I quite like Shugborough Tunnel, uh, which is in Staffordshire on the west coast. So I said, well, let's let's pretend, let's let's just cheat. Let's build the west coast and put Kevin Viaduct on the end, and the Shugborough Tunnel's on the end because it doesn't really matter. But be, because it's so big, we needed to create blocks so it just wasn't one big straight loop um, because that would become boring so i thought well the things that really stand out on the west coast when you travel every day is train cutting road junction the tunnel at burkhamston which is actually called north church tunnel and the watford tunnel because the watford tunnel actually looks like euston used to look when they built the railway and by swapping it around so that the original London to Birmingham is on the inside and not on the outside as it is on the real railway, it meant we could split the track and use double double balls and single balls for the, for the tunnels, which I think gives it a completely different feel. The great thing was we always, right at the very start, I said, the rolling stock now you can buy in double O. Locomotives, coaches, wagons, it's so good. I'm not even going to touch it. I'm going to concentrate on just building the scenery and the layout because the quality of the rolling stock now, even out of the box, is better than I could have built 25 years ago when I last time I built any double O stuff. Earlier we had the you know nine-car pendolino set up, and I have to say, you know, running around under the wires, it looks fantastic. A uh, bit of work still to do this afternoon. Um, we, I'm waiting to see the 86s and 87s and 85s up after lunch. Uh, but I think it, it works. And I think that we've got part of the signals automatic now. And I'm hoping by Saturday I've got more of the automatic signals working. Because I think if you're younger and you see the flashing lights and all that, I think that works for you. And the Hattons did participate heavily in this layout. Because all of the um, overhead gantry wire uh, I got from Hattons. Uh, I think sometimes they thought I was taking the mickey, ringing up and, and ordering the amount I ordered, but um, yeah, so Hattons played a big part in this layer. It opens uh, to the public on Sunday, uh, on Friday, that's our first official running day, and then it's every day but Sundays um, until September the 3rd, and it's big. <laughs> it is big. If size matters, this is the layout for you.